Hey everyone, this week I'm gonna switch gears again a little bit and go back into customization mode. So this week I'm gonna tackle the uh, RS fender flare on the driver's side. So if you're new to this channel, um, I had done the passenger side and I spent a lot of time and effort and research on determining what is an RS flare exactly. And I did so, I made one on the cheap. I took an SC flare and I modified it to the RS profile. So I'm gonna be doing the same thing. If you wanna go back and look at those videos, click this link right here and you can see um, exactly what I did on that. So I'm gonna be going a little faster this week only because it's repetitive. Stay tuned. Garage time. Okay, here's the flares I got in the mail. Like They came as a set and these are used SC flares. This is the, uh, the passenger side, but it's, it's, it's had some repairs done to it, and uh, I don't know if you can see here, but there's a bunch of welding and there's a pinhole in there. It's, uh, it needs to be repaired again. You know, someone has had a kind of heyday here just practicing their welding or something, but this is not done very well. It's all uh, warped and distorted. So I am not going to resell this. This is, this is trash. Um, but I might try to salvage um, a portion of the wheel arch. So if you remember from the previous video, I made my own kind of wheel arch using the bead roller, but this time I can probably cut a piece out of this one and use it for the, uh, the driver's side. A repair was done right here and it's just, it's all distorted. It's a big low spot right here. And then right here is another low spot all due to the well, um, heat distortion due to welding. So I'm gonna, um, cut out this bad welded area because it's got a bunch of pinholes in it.
Okay, so now I'm back just to a uh, repaired kind of stock SC flare. I'm gonna start um, laying out the marks so I know where to cut the arch and start adding into the arch. But before I start to do that, let me just flip it over. I'll show you the backside. Here's the backside sort of scar. I'm not gonna do uh, much more uh, grinding on the backside. Just gonna kind of leave this as is. It, it does fit pretty flush. This is my uh, kind of favorite test to see how smooth this uh, patch is. Just a tiny bit of daylight right there. It's a tiny bit of a low spot. So when this is on the car, it'll be easier for me to, to hold it and hammer it. It's better than it was when I got it. All right, and just like that, we have the uh, RS flare, at least my version of it. This is an SC flare modified to the RS uh, profile. Obviously, this arch here is longer or taller, and it just has a different shape to it, which I like. So I'm going to see how it looks on the car. Let's do it. Okay, I just have it clamped on the car, and uh, it's just two clamps, one down here in the, the torsion bar hole, and then the other one here back by where the bumper goes. And, um, you know, it fits pretty well as expected. This is, you know, cut out of a, of a car as a Porsche part. Okay, you can see it's fitting tied up against the body all the way along. And then right here is where it starts to get a little bit different, a little bit of a discrepancy. So technically, um, this flare should have been cut a little higher up here, but I'm gonna make it work just like I did the other side. Um, what has to happen is you just have to hammer and dolly on the, the tub 
to sort of make it meet the contour of this. So this has to get stretched out here. It's, it's not the end of the world, um, but I had the same problem on the other side where these contours just are not quite matching. So this being a bigger bulge, this being a, a less of a bulge, there's just a little bit of a mismatch at the top, but everything else is fitting uh, excellent. Now, if you remember from the other side, I'm using this bar to not only line the flare up um, in, the fore and aft, in the fore and aft direction, but I'm also lining it up in the, in the vertical direction this way, and uh, also making sure it's centered in the, uh, the wheel arch. Okay, I've got all the marks I need on this bar, just like I did on the other side. Things seem to correlate pretty well with the other side. I have the, um, the marks there of, of the uh, width of the flare, also the location lined up on the wheel well. And I have down here, it might be a little hard to see, but I have the uh, torsion bar holes are, are lined up very, very well. And then here on the back, I have the uh, the area where the fender attaches, it's uh, up flush. Okay, I've marked a new line right here on the flare because I don't need this much on the flare. So I'm going to um, do something I didn't do on the other side. I'm gonna cut through both of these at the same time with the air saw. Um, you know, the air saw has a pretty thin blade. So I'm gonna make use of the thin blade and just try to cut through on one pass. I don't want a wide gap to have to TIG weld later, but I think I'm gonna be okay if I do it just on the one side. And then on the other side, I will trim this off the car and scribe it like I did on here. There's a scribe line, very, very fine scribe line all the way into the factory paint right there. Okay, that's about enough damage that I can do with the air saw. So I made a pretty conservative cut. Um, back here on the right corner, it's an exact cut, so I need to you know, put priority on that and then kind of fine, fine tune everything up here. I need to, uh, next up, I need to remove the undercoating from the back side. So I can do a little hammer and dolly on this section right here, right below this, uh, this measurement bar because I need to stretch that metal out so it meets up better with the curvature of the new flare. All right, I haven't been doing as much narration or talking on this video, only because this is the second time I've done this. And if you'd like to see the full video of how I got the measurements, how I did the, the uh, the layout of the flare, please click up here for uh, that video. That was for the passenger side. I cover in a lot more depth how I did the RS conversion. But the, the, the simple idea here is that I was too cheap to buy the real RS flares. And there's a lot of aftermarket companies that make RS flares. Um, I actually have one. The, the profile is, is a lot different than the factory parts. Um, and, and just the, the crispness of the body lines are, are just slightly different. So um, one, because I'm cheap. Two, because um, I can buy the, the uh, SC flares for on average like $100 each. So that, uh, that's, a, that's a big savings. I'll actually recoup that money when I sell the flares off of this car. So 
it's really kind of a wash and, and that's, that's, that's why I did it. Uh, you saw the amount of work that was involved. It was a pretty solid day of either, you know, both fixing the existing flare and also converting it to the RS and then getting it trimmed to fit. So what's left is the difficult part of undercoating removal, which, you know, that's actually the worst part. I hate the undercoating removal. You know, I, I use a wire wheel uh, and it sucks, but let me know what you guys use. I know people have used, you know, heat and paint strippers, which I, I use a little paint stripper too. Wire wheels, uh, dry ice, um, heat, heat gun, torch, all that stuff. I mean, I think each one has its disadvantages. Leave a comment below and let me know what your opinion is of undercoating removal. So if you are new to this channel and you're interested in seeing more metal work, um, more welding, more alignment, uh, I did the whole back date on this car. All those videos are available. So please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And uh, go ahead and click the playlist right here. That playlist has all my videos in sequential order, so you won't miss any of them. We'll see you again next week.